No contact is the holy grail of escaping from the grip of our kind. It is, of course, for numerous reasons, both on your side and ours, not always possible to achieve it. Nevertheless, because no contact amounts to ignoring our kind, it remains the most powerful tool in the victim's armory. You are always advised to implement it and keep it in place when you have ascertained that you are dealing with one of our kind. Not only does it provide you with a period of respite after a tumultuous period of time so that you can recuperate and gather some much needed strength, it also reduces drastically our effect on you because we operate so much based on our interaction with you. Although we may derive thought fuel from knowing how you will react to many of our manipulations, that will only sustain us for a period of time until it then begins to fade. If we continue to apply the same manipulation in expectation of a response, but there is none which is forthcoming that we can witness, then the envisaged reaction loses its potency and moves from being thought fuel to a criticism of us, because then we know that we are being ignored. Thus, if you have escaped our clutches, and we send you a series of text messages, at first we envisage that you will be upset to receive them, and this provides us with thought fuel. If there is no response, however, this thought fuel fades in its potency, and we are left feeling ignored after a period of time. And this then amounts to a criticism, and ignites our fury. This is why no contact is so important to you, and so infuriating to us. How then do our kind feel when no contact has been implemented? Let us begin with the lesser narcissist. If you tell the lesser narcissist that the formal relationship has ended, and do so in person, you have just ignited the blue touch paper. His instinctive reaction is one of huge criticism at this rejection. He will barely feel the rejection, however, as the ignition of his fury will be almost immediate. A massive eruption of heated fury will occur, and you are in physical danger. He will not beg for you to stay. He will not plead with you. Such thoughts do not present themselves to him, because the proverbial red mist has descended. Rage is coursing through him, furious and visceral rage, which obliterates any rational thinking. He has lost control, and he will direct this heated fury at you. He will physically prevent your departure, as he locks doors, removes keys, bolts gates, closes windows, and so forth. Expect the tyres on your car to be slashed, or the windscreen put through, as he continues to pace back and forth, cursing and hurling all manner of insults at you. There is a complete loss of control. He may very well attack you, blind fury causing a flurry of punches and kicks in your direction. If there is a weapon to hand, it will be used. His instinctive response is one he has not any control over, and it is done to achieve one thing, and one thing alone, to cause you pain. He has no time to make you frustrated or angry. He cannot wait, although he does not know this, for the tears to flow, although they will. He needs fuel because this massive rage that has been caused through the horrendous wound you have generated from you telling him that it is over and you are leaving is draining him and draining him fast. The huge wound you have created needs to be healed and the ignited fury is using his fuel up 
and doing so quickly. He needs an emotional reaction from you. It must be straight away. Thus, he lashes out at you verbally and physically to generate a pained response by you, accompanied by fear and then upset. This will give him the instant hit of fuel. This will begin to repair the wound. He will not allow you to get away from him for two reasons. The first is that subconsciously he needs you there to provide the fuel which he requires. Secondly, allowing you to go would more or less finish him, since it would be a further criticism. This departure criticism wounds on two fronts. First, the very fact you are going, having said that you were, opens up another criticism by telling him he is not good enough. Secondly, the fact he has not been able to stop you destroys his sense of power and control. The first criticism of telling him it is over, if allowed to combine with the double-edged criticism of departure, will bring him to the blink of collapse. Thus, his instinctive reaction is both to stop your departure and to draw fuel from you. If he injures you, this will most likely prevent your departure. He will keep attacking you until the rage subsides. This will happen when the wound has been healed by the fuel you provide. If you cannot escape, but somehow provide no fuel when assaulted physically and or verbally, your criticism of telling him you will go and continue to wound him. He has no choice but to keep attacking you in order to provide a reaction from you. It is a knee-jerk response, and extremely unlikely as it is, if you fail to provide fuel, this continued assault would most likely result in you being killed. Of course, Nearly everybody subjected to this would respond in pain and fear, thus the fuel is provided. Significant, and potentially life-threatening, harm will already have happened. Once the rage subsides, you'll be left in a crumpled heap, possibly unconscious, as finally the rage leaves him. Telling a lesser narcissist that the formal relationship is over and doing so face to face is an extremely dangerous step. What of the situation whereby you leave a letter, send a message, or just do nothing and allow him to work out that it is over? Once realization has dawned on him that you have departed, the fury is ignited once again. There is the first criticism and he is severely wounded. The second criticism has not yet happened, however. That double-edged criticism has not occurred. This is because, although you have left, he was not given the chance at the point of knowing it was over to try to stop you. Thus, his fury is ignited. But he is not overwhelmed yet by the wound. With fury ignited, the lesser will fly into a rage and lash out at those around him in an immediate knee-jerk response to draw fuel in order to address the wound. Straight away, his only thought is to find you. If he does, and is able to face you face to face, then the scenario will pan out as above. He will smash things up in order to reach you, break down doors, assault people to get past them, And once he has you face to face, you will be ordered to return home. If you do not, you will be forcibly taken back, assaulted in the process. It is akin to a caveman dragging his wife back to the cave by her hair. If you manage to resist his attempts to drag you back, either because he cannot find you, or if he can find you, he cannot reach you, 
the failure to achieve his aim will wound him further. Anybody who is in his path, friends, family, strangers, the police, will feel the full force of his raging fury. This will continue in a bid to draw fuel from them. If fuel is provided, it will not completely heal the wound in the way fuel from you would, but rather it will provide him with enough to cause the rage to subside. He will then withdraw to lick his wounds and seek out alternative fuel. He may return, but not straight away. His follow-up hoovers will depend on entering the spheres of influence. His immediate need will be to recover from this criticism and find a new primary source, whilst relying on fuel from secondary and tertiary sources. If you resist his attempts to drag you back, and he is unable to draw fuel in the immediacy from those around him, for example, he is arrested and slung in his cell, or people stay out of his way, thus he is denied fuel. He will then be teetering on the edge of oblivion. The rage will be extinguished, as there is nothing left to power it any more. He will feel weak, and have a sense of his world coming to an end. He will withdraw, and enter a depressed state, hiding away from the cruel and tormenting world. He will stay in this state, until such time as someone provides him with the first drops of fuel to pull him from this depressed and weakened state. Like water hitting a thirsting plant, he will respond to this fuel, and then have sufficient energy to seek out more, and then more, continuing his recovery until he is functioning in his usual way. At this point, he will need a new primary source, if one has not already presented itself to him, and he will apply himself to securing this, which may include in hoovering you if circumstances allow. If you are not hoovered, he will seduce a different new primary source and then be occupied with that primary source thereafter. You will largely be left alone unless you enter the inner spheres of influence which will result in you receiving a malign hoover, because you will, at this juncture, be pointed out as an individual who is the enemy. The reaction of the lesser narcissist to no contact is one of blinding, blazing fury. He lashes out left, right and centre in the immediate and pressing need for fuel. If he obtains fuel from you, and secures stopping you from leaving, the rage will abate. If he cannot stop you, but secures fuel, he will eventually withdraw, rage unable to be powered, but with sufficient fuel to still function and seek out a new primary source. If that fuel is denied to him, he will ultimately shut down, until such time as fuel is provided to effectively waken him again. The lesser's immediate response to the instigation of no contact is dangerous, it is violent, but entirely predictable. <laughs>